I know this isn't the way you're supposed to wind your bobbin, but sometimes I don't feel like taking it all the way off. And getting it through that tensioner in the back can be a challenge, so I just go through the hole in the back there, and there's enough tension here that it will keep my thread tight. Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. I've got another 3115. It's a 1939 Singer 3115 industrial sewing machine. And let me step back here and I'll show you. It's on it's on the industrial base. I power wash the base and repaint it with uh a rust-oleum paint. I guess you can use any kind of paint you like. I use this uh, rust-oleum hammered and that shellac there that's what I'm putting on the wood surface. I like to keep the uh, I like to keep the vintage look to the machine uh, so when I redo this top I'll just clean it and uh, just lightly sand it. I don't want it to look new. I want it to look vintage. So this might look like a mess, but uh, this is sanded, it's smooth, and it's perfectly clean. You're not going to get any kind of oil or grease or anything on your project. And then what I do uh, with the sewing machine here, the paint was r really bad on the, the deck of the machine here. And uh, I've done this once before. I opt to just take and uh, remove all the paint from here. Not with chemicals, just mechanically. I just take a really sharp uh, chisel and you, you get under that paint and you'll take it right off. And then I don't even bother to sand this or anything. I want this to have a old look too. And I end right here at this post. I leave, I don't care how chipped up or whatever this is. I'm just getting it really clean and I'm putting a new coat of shellac on it. And then over here I do the same thing with the thread, thread winder. I want that I want this thing to look old and original, but if I work on something, I don't want it to get dirty. So I clean everything up. I ordered a new piece of belt here, made up a, a appropriate belt so everything looks uh, correct. I got my original thread stand here. I did opt to repaint this portion. This is original down here, the base. And as you can see, I like to have the knee lift on the machine. And uh, it's got the original foot pedal there. Toolbox is a different matter. A part of it was missing, so I just went to the restore store and got some reclaimed wood and a little handle. And I think it, it looks good enough on there. But then I, I decided to do something a little different when it came to the motor. The motor was working fine, but uh, I had a little extra time this summer. So what I decided to do, I'll try to show you under here. I have to flip the screen on the camera. I went and I bought one of these servo motors that's two pieces. You can see the control box over here and uh, the motor back there. And I went a little over the top with this one and kind of wanted to camouflage that back there. So I actually spray painted that the same color as the, as the, uh, the stand here of the machine. And then I went ahead and put uh, brown leather, I painted the control box box here black and put brown leather on the side and I put brown leather on the front and when you hit the pedal you can see the, uh, let's go ahead and turn on the machine. And you can see I left that little window that tells you what the machine is doing open. The buttons, you can feel them, they're right behind the leather, oh, right down here actually. And then when I press the pedal, it'll show me what RPM I'm sewing at. All right, let me show you what uh, this machine uses. I've got original needle package here. See if it'll focus in on that. It uses a 16 by 87 needle. This happens to be a size 18 in this package. You might have a hard time finding these, or they might be a little expensive, but I'll look up... Uh, I'll look up what the more modern number is and leave that in the uh, description below. Um, the, the nice thing is this machine has a 
uh, the ability to move the needle bar up and down when you're timing it. It has a pinned, pinned hook, they call it, so you can't change that. But if the needle is just a, the tiniest bit uh, shorter or longer, you can remedy that with the needle bar adjustment. And this just uses a class 15 bobbin, a class 15 bobbin case. It's the old style with the very short pin here to catch in there when it's rocking back and forth. And then it uses just regular Singer, Singer feet go on there. They're industrial size, they're not the small. You'll always know if it's a Singer foot, they branded everything. It'll say Singer or Samanco, Samanco on there. I got a couple different feet here. And uh, let me adjust the camera and I'll show you this thing sewing some different fabrics. All right, let me just show you quickly here. Uh, this is like an overgrown uh, Singer 1591. It kind of looks like it. It's just bigger. And you've got from the post here to the needle about 10 and 3 eighths inches, 10 and a quarter inches to get your work in. And uh, I've just got a size 18 needle in here with a standard uh, thread. This machine would have been used by somebody doing tailoring work, making clothing and whatnot. And let me check to make sure I'm powered up here. And I like, really like the fact that you've got your knee lift here that you can keep both your hands on your work and still... I've got this set up so I can go pretty slowly here. That's a, a, the slowest I can go. But that gives you pretty good control and with, with a servo motor you can um, okay I'm just stop it there. You can use the hand wheel and there's really no resistance with the servo motor if you want to just do a couple stitches if you're coming around the corner or something. And this is two layers of marine vinyl Size a regular size 18 needle and a regular about a Tex uh, 40 thread, I believe. And this this machine doesn't have reverse, but the the trick to that is uh, get get your uh, needle position. Just pick up the foot and pull the pull the material back towards you. And if you want to get really particular, you can use your finger and the hand wheel to put the needle right back in the the hole like three holes back that it just came out of and just stitch over that and you've just locked your stitch and once you get to accustomed with a machine like this with the knee lift and everything uh, reverse is not even a big deal anymore I mean if, if there was people sewing clothing with these back in 1939 all the way through the 50s without re having reverse obviously uh, it wasn't a big deal the, the machine will also go fast too but let me demonstrate something else here now this is uh, I'm not sure what this is called uh, somebody that had me work on a machine donated this to me it's some kind of rip stop nylon or something it's supposed to be like for military bags or something like that and they were trying to put it put some things together they ended up buying a machine from me either I fixed their machine or they bought a machine from me I can't remember it was a few years ago but I'll put four layers of this together I remember this is a regular needle this is supposed to be kind of tough stuff here but let me get my foot down. I'm just going to by hand start the needle. So, I mean, this is not, doesn't have the kind of power that a walking foot has, but it has really aggressive feed dogs down here. And if you use the, the foot that's a little bit wider, so you get the full amount of coverage of the foot pressing down on these feed dogs it uh, it doesn't have any problem feeding that didn't have any problem feeding that material and we got a good stitch on both sides so the one thing that will feed a little bit slower you if you did have a small leather project that you had to work on well, you can see this is 
This was another donation by a guy that was working with leather that wanted me to, he left me, you can see he put a B on it there. He left me several different leathers to uh, test with his machine and adjust it accordingly. So this one will do it, but as you can see, it doesn't move the leather through the machine as good as a walking foot would because the walking foot is using a needle to pull the, the material through. But you can still put two pieces of leather together. So let's just demonstrate that. And remember, this is not a leather needle. It's not a chisel point. It's just a regular needle. And if you do attempt to do something like this, bear in mind that there's more resistance on this needle now. So when this comes up out of the leather, that leather is you know, trying to grip, grip the shank of that needle and you might have to adjust your foot pressure here a little down a little bit harder just to keep this leather from hopping off the table. And you can tell it's hammering. With the leather needle it would probably wouldn't make quite so much noise because the, the needle would be cutting, actually cutting a groove in the leather, but that's what we got just using a standard needle and thread. So, I mean, it, it would do it, but it's not, that's not what this is intended for. And since we're having so much fun sewing here, let's do one more piece of marine vinyl. We'll just do four layers of, uh, that other vinyl, that red vinyl, I don't think that was marine vinyl. I think that was just a regular upholstery vinyl. But this is for, this is actual marine vinyl. I know because I bought this at the fabric store. This wasn't a donation. Well, that concludes the sewing part and kind of just an overview of what a 3115 is and what, what it will do. It does, uh, you can adjust the stitch length for everything I did here. I had the stitch length on the longest length stitch it'll do. And uh, I'll show everybody how to oil this quickly here if you want to hang around and watch that or if you've had enough of, uh, got enough information already. Uh, I'll catch you in the next video. I'll otherwise, hang around for a minute. One thing I forgot to mention is I will leave in the description below a link to the uh, servo motor that I purchased. I think they're running right around $100 right now, but if you stuck around to see, make sure you use sewing machine oil. I buy, buy it by the gallon and just put it in this little bottle because it's handier for me. But you're gonna, some of these old singers, you're gonna wanna put a little bit back here. There's a shaft for right by the hand wheel that goes through the whole machine. A couple down here, there's a hinge to the, down to the lower part of the machine. Just kinda chase along these holes here. A lot of the little oils, uh, oil signs on the machine with the arrows on this one are gone, faded away, worn off. I put a little bit around the needle bar shaft here, put a drop down this shaft, it's the one that goes to the presser foot bar, and then you've got one here for the foot, and there's one right here in the post that'll go down below. And then don't forget, I don't know if you can see it in the camera, way over here, see me over here, there's a hole for you to oil your bobbin winder right there and I think that's everything on top and then you want to tip the machine back like this make sure I'm there's one over here on the side let me see if you're in the shot okay there's one over here on the side and then I'm just gonna turn the hand wheel a little bit now some of these will have a oiling hole right in the casting here and some of them might not but otherwise, just go ahead and turn your hand wheel where you see these parts rotating. Um, or if you see an oil hole, just go ahead and hit that with a little oil. 
I'm getting this one back here. For these, you'll see the the shafts running through the machine, and then you'll see there's a pin that it rotates on there. Make sure you hit all of those, and then you should be in good shape. And then when you put your machine back down, uh, you might want to hold your uh, put your knee lift pedal off to the side so when you set this down there's a little finger on the machine that you want to make sure it's on the right side of the lever. Alright I know I said this was going to be a quick video on this machine but I always seem to ramble on so uh, thanks for watching and if you have any questions about this one leave them in the, the section below and uh, yeah I'll see what I got coming up next. I got a 301 I'm working on, so I'll see how that goes. Thanks for watching.